Okay, you'll have to excuse the mess here. This is my new coil I've been winding. As you can see, it's a, a large one. I think it's about four, well, it's 11 centimeters in diameter. And I put a whole pound of wire on that, so you're looking at um, about 1,750 winds of 26 gauge. And initially, it was really quite disappointing. You can see how I'll, I'll put a ruler beside it. So that's a ruler. Now, my form goes even higher, as you can see. It's about 34 inches in total. So I was going to splice and continue this up. Because I wanted to make a big one. And uh, initially it was pretty disappointing. I won't, I won't lie. Um, I couldn't get it to run on anything less than about 9 volts. And then, and then I found out the battery I was using was defective. So, short and long is on uh, uh, MPS A06, I can get it to run on about 4 volts um, with fairly good brightness at 260 milliamps. Um, I'm fairly happy with that level of light that comes out of it. Now, the first thing you see is that you know I've got this pretty big hokey primary on it. Well, I wound this one originally here. Sorry for the big mess. I wound this, you know, fairly uniform 18 gauge wire. And this did nothing. I was really disappointed with how that worked. So, you know, I just started fooling around with different, you know, basic stuff and I came to the conclusion that I need pretty big gauge wire of course it's all reduced to smaller wire on the crocs which is you know probably all wrong so i would like to get some kind of clue of how i can you know like i'll probably put it on a, a little printed circuit board so that i can keep the gauges i got you know all kinds of crazy things happening where the wire changes gauges and whatnot but nonetheless i do want to get this finished and I'm just kind of playing with it right now um, what I'm running right now is a uh, tip 31 C with about 600 K on the base resistance I did a funny wind I did something different than I do I started going in a um, counterclockwise rotations on this and how I ended up getting it to work was doing the opposite with the primary so the primary goes clockwise and it has about four winds of real heavy AC solid core wire consequently where the wire starts to um, go the start winding of the primary is actually hooked up to uh, keep mixing up my transistors to the collector and the base is hooked up to the start winding of the um, L1 or the secondary and uh, the end of the primary goes to positive anyway I didn't find what I was looking for at all I wanted to try to replicate G. Bluer's illumination of LEDs and fluoros on the 1.5 volt level using a little variable capacitor. Uh, 4 volts was the lowest I could get this set up to, to go. I don't know whether having all that extra core makes any difference, but it is cardboard. But like I say, I wanted to go higher. I want to go make a pretty big one. And then, uh, so I started messing around, and I'm really in a, just a fooling around stage right now. So, I'll show you what it does when I run it on 12 volts. It definitely cranks off the, the light. This, I'm going to shut off this light in this room here. 
Now you can see it's 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 faking this other one over here. So I'll pull that out so because there's a bit of a draw there. And in all fairness, I'll turn off my monitor on my computer too because that eliminates a bit. But you can see it, it it definitely cranks off the light. Problem is it's drawing an app. Next thing to an app. So you're looking at about 12 watts of power consumption. However, I have tried to create my own 12 volt inverter with no luck. You may, if you watch my video on my 12 volt inverter, um, I got nothing but freaking plasma forming on the bulbs uh, up at the tops, and uh, I don't have any plasma. So, at very least, I've created a better 12 volt inverter for myself. I mean, this is this is a usable light. You know, uh, it's it goes way beyond the, the other ones that I've done and of course it it will fire up it'll fire up another bulb too I mean and now you see you've got more light in the room you know, as well so basically you can see now this one's actually sitting in a little <laughs> uh, bobbin of, of wire so that might be boosting it actually a little bit because it's a little bit like a coil just sitting on that wire and you know it'll it'll fire up a third even add a little different color to the room so you know I suppose this video will tell the story as as to uh, the funny thing is is the more you put on there the uh, the draw goes down it's probably sitting at about 900 milliamps right now whereas with just one it cranks off about one amp so to give you some kind of uh, comparison this is same kind of bulb alright now over here you have a conventional uh, setup and this is not even a modern one this is an old one with the magnetic ballast I looked on the back it's 120 volts 240 milliamps which means that it pulls 28 watts which is more than double what the Slayer does okay so just to give you a bit of a comparison that's interesting my Slayer just uh, turned on my scanner <laughs> okay I notice this tower does crazy things. I can't even use my computer when I'm running it. It's just unbelievable. I'm probably cooking my brain while I'm doing this too. But anyway, um, that's. Oh, let me turn that back on for a second. Sorry. I'll turn on this other lamp, conventional lamp. Okay, now I'll turn off the Slayer circuit. Okay, so we'll let the camera adjust. And you can see it's brighter. It's also way more annoying, too. The one thing I do like about the Slayer uh, circuits is under driving fluorescence makes them a lot nicer to look at. In a way, I'd rather have a bunch of underdriven bulbs than uh, than one just rocking. So you can see the difference. It's brighter. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. But at double the power consumption, is it double the brightness? I don't know. I do not know. We'll just do one more comparison of the ambient light. Here, let's look at the battery and see how well it's illuminated. You can see the writing on it. Okay, so that's with the 28 watt conventional magnetic ballast. And then let's turn on the stove first. Pull this guy out of the loop. And that's the light that you get from the Slayer. Of course it's different direction too. That's just the Slayer running three tubes. 
at about 900 milliamps, so somewhere around 11 watts or something. I'm surprised I haven't fried the, the transistor because I don't even have a heat sink on it. Anyway, I still would like to accomplish some results closer to like G Bluer or Jiffy Call. They got some amazing stuff going on with, with these size towers. And uh, I would love to, I would love to see this thing hooked up to a 1.5 volt battery, just boosting uh, 50 LEDs or, or hell, even getting this as bright as one of these as bright as uh, as um, my this tower when I read it on four volts. But anyway, it's coming along. And I'm playing with it, having fun. Thanks for watching.